As WWE fans over the course of the past decade, we've come to understand certain certainties of life. Death, taxes, and John Cena in the main event picture of the WWE. Oftentimes being pounded into your head, shoved down your throat, and straight up your keister. We all know this reality. We all know this nightmare, frankly. And that's what it's been for a lot of the past decade. A lot of the reason so many wrestling fans were turned away from the WWE is in part, not wholly or totally, but in part due to the incessant force of John Cena down people's throats and ultimately what he represented and how so many things were potentially killed or ruined because you had to ultimately protect the corporate face, the prop, if you will. And that's just the way it's been. It's been kind of interesting over the past year, two years, how the companies really backed off of him. That ties into, in part, John Cena starting to realize, hey, maybe The Rock had a good idea. I can start going do other things. Uh, create myself new revenue streams, take a break from the road schedule of professional wrestling from WWE, and keep myself fresher and give myself potentially a longer shelf life. And I've also found it to be really interesting where John Cena, in some ways, hasn't changed one damn bit. His gear is still primarily the same, still trying to hawk his merch in the most shameless BS way possible. Um... His entrance hasn't changed. His theme song hasn't changed. You know, so many things about John Cena are still vanilla and still the same. But because there was this kind of creative shift over the past two years to try and make John Cena more of a worker as opposed to a top guy, it's kind of interesting to me that we've transitioned from deep-seated hatred of John Cena by the hardcore fans to, you know, ambivalence to tolerance to in some cases some admiration and respect for the guy it's been a fascinating thing to see over the past two years how this has played out i think a lot of it ties into him being the united states champion and defending the title every week um having in theory some good matches it's been really interesting to see now granted at the same time, this has been happening. You get Roman Reigns, who is now the most hated hardcore fan guy in WWE. He's taken that mantle from John Cena. Now, John Cena will always carry a special place in the heart of hardcore fans in terms of wanting to hate him. And then ultimately, when he comes out, you're going to say, John Cena sucks. Or you're going to hear, let's go Cena, Cena sucks. You know, that type of crap. It's kind of like with Kurt Angle for... A number of years. You would hear the music, the crowd would chant, you suck, even though they knew damn good and well he didn't suck. No, I'm not saying that scene that doesn't suck, it's just, it's a little different. But, I found it very interesting how you've had this shift in kind of the aura surrounding John Cena amongst WWE fans, amongst hardcore fans. There's other things to complain about and bitch about. Frankly, the WWE's done a good job of backing off of him. John Cena's done a good job of kind of backing off of himself. To where it lends you to almost be tricked into wanting to appreciate the guy. Now, I'm not falling for the bullshit. I know there are many others that are not falling for this BS. But there are many that ultimately are. And I understand it. I get it. You've got bigger targets, namely Roman Reigns, to hate on. Um, so that's where you <laughs> direct a lot of your vitriol and vile anger towards. And again, I get it. Um... But we're reaching that moment in time. And ultimately, we knew this moment in time was only a matter of time. With the announcement that John Cena is going to challenge AJ Styles for the WWE Championship at the Royal Rumble, we know the moment in hand is upon us. That moment in time where John Cena ultimately stamps his place in the record books by winning his 16th world title in WWE and tying Ric Flair in theory for the most ever. We know this is an inevitability. We've known for years that this was going to happen. The WWE had invested so much into John Cena over so many years 
that you knew at some point in time they were going to want to give this to him as a sign of respect. They were going to want to sit there and in some ways validate what they've done with him over the course of a decade or so. And we, we know what's going to come with this is you're going to get the the fans that are going to sit there and try to talk about how you have to respect Cena even if you don't like him. The same shit we've been hearing for years. And we know the WWE propaganda machine we're going to get that we've been getting for a few years now about how this further validates that John Cena is the greatest WWE superstar of all time. Give me an effing break. He was the top guy in the company for a decade when they lost a sizable portion of their domestic audience. That does not make the greatest WWE superstar ever. That makes a very ineffective prop for the corporation. That's what he is. But we know this moment at hand is coming. It's at hand. And ultimately, it would make no sense to put John Cena in this position if you weren't ultimately going to follow through and have him end up winning that WWE Championship away from AJ Styles at the Royal Rumble. It's going to happen. It has to happen. Because otherwise, if it wasn't, why would you go there? Now, sure, some people will sit there and say, well, you would use this title match as a plot device to set up something bigger for John Cena come WrestleMania that doesn't involve the title. And maybe you could. And maybe it would work. And especially if you have one particular individual in mind, it could potentially work out relatively well. But it would also kind of fit into the mindset of, at the end of the day, more of the same old shit. Whatever John Cena is involved with is the most important thing. Even if he's not involved in the world title, it ultimately becomes more important than the world title. And I don't know if we really want to go barking down that tree again. I just don't. So I look at it and I say, first, from AJ Styles' perspective. Now, surely a lot of people are going to be upset if AJ Styles ultimately drops the strap to John Cena. And in a couple of things. Number one, AJ Styles has clearly been the WWE superstar of 2016, and I don't know that it's close. From maybe an entertainment value standpoint and a being productive standpoint, maybe The Miz would be the closest thing I'd come up with. But it's been AJ Styles' year. 2016 is the year of AJ Styles. I think period, no question about it. You look at his title reign, and he's on SmackDown, and they've kind of in some ways made him into just another standard cookie-cutter chicken shit heel that the WWE loves to do once they heal out a guy and put him at the top. I don't know why. You know, why can't he be a heel and yet beat people legitimately and clean and not cry and complain and bitch and cheat and do all this other crap? You know, but that, that takes creativity, something the company is severely lacking. But looking at it from a, a AJ Styles' character standpoint, you know, it's not like they've cared a whole hell of a lot about him being the world champion because they've had him in a bad feud with Dean Ambrose. And then you got to the point where his feud with James Ellsworth was more important than the feud with Dean Ambrose. So a lot of the situations that they put AJ Styles in have been very much wax fill. He's done a good job, in my opinion, to try and overcome that and make the most out of that. But that's what good performers do, which, frankly, there are not a lot of in WWE, no matter what the indie nerds will try to tell you. But when you look at AJ Styles' character, you say, you know, maybe on the one hand you want him to walk into WrestleMania with the championship, but do you really want him to leave WrestleMania without the championship? On top of that, you're kind of reaching that point maybe where you start to get a diminishing return on AJ Styles being the champion. So heading into a new year, needing to again shake some things up, create some revitalized interest. You know, is AJ Styles staying the champion for a long period of time really the way to go? I don't think so. I think it's better for the product if he's not the champion after the Royal Rumble. And frankly, I think it's better for AJ Styles' character if he's not the champion after the Royal Rumble. Because it opens up a lot of different possibilities of what you could do with him in the first quarter of 2017, ultimately culminating at WrestleMania 33. And from the John Cena standpoint, you know, you, you put this much into him for so long, ultimately, like it or not, at the end of the day, they have to follow through. Because why would you sit there and put all of this into him for so many years just to have him finish with 15 world titles? You've already made those shirts. You've already sold those shirts. Now, and ultimately, this is what it always comes down to with John Cena. It's always about revenue and merchandise streams. And taking that merchandise and creating revenue streams. 
Now you could create new shirts and new merchandise around John Cena being a 16-time world champion. You could do all of these different things. So that's where they're going to go. They have to go there because otherwise why would you have sat there and done what you've done since 2005 with John Cena? That makes absolutely no sense. If you're going to get close to the mountain, you might as well reach the summit. And, and there, there's something to be said about doing that because you want to get the return on that investment, but I think there's potentially a story to be made there in terms of him winning that 16th world championship. And even talking about a return match, which if we're trying to run the business the right way, we want to think about AJ Styles, John Cena, where's the return match? The return match isn't in AJ Styles beating John Cena. The return match to me, my opinion, is having John Cena beat AJ Styles and then AJ Styles at the next pay-per-view, the one in between Rumble and WrestleMania, coming back and wanting his title. You do a last man standing, you do some type of Iron Man match, you do something because these guys have previous history. And there's naturally a good storytelling element there. And at some point in time, Cena needs to win the title to kind of piece it all together. Now, I know this kind of comes back to the part of everything ultimately has to come back to Cena, and there's something to be said about that. But there's also something to be said about talking back to the return on the investment, that if you sit there and you continue to knock Cena down and you continue to have him lose, you get a diminishing return when people actually do beat him, and you don't want that. You're in that situation where Cena needs to lose some, but he still needs to win. As long as you've got him in the fold, you want to get the most you can out of him. That is the reality of WWE, like it or not. So having him lose again to AJ Styles, especially if it's in a bullshit fashion at Royal Rumble, doesn't help John Cena, and it most certainly doesn't help AJ Styles. Here, where you have the babyface win the belt, now the heel can chase, that's always been the better formula for success with WWE anyways. And now you can set up, like I said, to some big monster kind of money match at that middle pay-per-view. You know, it's a good way to go, especially because now you can have AJ Styles talk about how John Cena got lucky. It was a fluke. He didn't take him seriously. He had beaten him before, and by God, at the next show, I'm going to do it again. You could have John Cena talking about, oh, you're the face that runs the place. Well, brother, when it comes to SmackDown, when it comes to WWE, I am the place. You've got a month of programming built right around that. Cena wanting to keep the championship and further validate he's the best of all time. AJ Styles saying, that's the past. I am the here and now, and I want my throne back. I want to walk into WrestleMania the champion. There's more story there. And it's just more productive for both characters involved. Not to mention the fact when you look ahead to WrestleMania, you think about last year WrestleMania, it really felt odd to have Cena involved in the role that he did, coming out and helping The Rock. I mean, he was there, and it was kind of cool to see, but that's not how you want to utilize a guy like Cena. And when you think about WrestleMania, and you think about the lack of top stars on the current product, you know, you can't main event a Lesnar-Goldberg rematch at WrestleMania. It's going to be on the card. It deserves to be on the card. But you're not bringing the show home with that. When I look at people that I would trust at a WrestleMania to be able to effectively bring the show home, I look at John Cena and say, that's one of the guys that I would want to put in that position. He's been there. He's done that. Sometimes well, sometimes not so well. But I know what I've got in him. It's a proven commodity. And frankly, at this point in time, we can talk about future. We can talk about different things. The WWE just needs to put together good shows at this point. Damn the future. We need to worry more so about the here and now. And John Cena defending the title at WrestleMania, potentially in the main event, could be a money match. Now, I've talked before about somebody like Big E getting that opportunity, winning the Rumble, and it could potentially work. But frankly, at this point in time, I've changed my mind too. I don't think that's the way to go. I think ultimately, with all the talk that there's been about John Cena and The Undertaker facing off at WrestleMania, that's the direction they should go. That's the direction they need to go. That's the direction they have to go. That is the money match of money matches that they could have on this year's card. And if you want to maximize the appeal of that and the draw of that, in my opinion, John Cena versus The Undertaker needs to be for the WWE Championship at WrestleMania 33. And I'll talk more about that in my next video.